everybody this morning. It's good to see you. You know, we were right behind a van this morning, and it said on it, the best is yet to come. I want you to say that the best is yet to come. Oh, that's what I'm declaring over you. That's what I'm prophesying over the Revival Center. That's what I'm prophesying over your family. That's what I'm declaring over this community, this neighborhood, this region, Canada. Lord, we just come in agreement with that word this morning that the best is yet to come. Lord, that you are moving and positioning the players right into the peace, the place where they should be, oh God, that you are the greatest chess player. And Lord, that you move and that you assign and that you design, God, the play by play. And so, Lord, we declare that this morning, that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. All we have to do is release ourselves into the master's hand. I want to ask you this morning, do you want to be a peace Do you want to be a player in the kingdom that God can do whatever he wants to do? Is that your heart this morning? Because I'm telling you, if we open up our heart, if we open up our lives, we can be moved by the hand of God to do and and to be whatever he wants us to do and be. Wherever he wants us to be placed, whatever he wants us to accomplish. You see, I am not my own, but I'm his. Are you his this morning? Because if you are his, then immediately when you are his, your life becomes completely available to the master. And that's what I want to ask you. Are you completely available to the master this morning? Because I'm telling God wants to do something. Does he want to do something? God wants to do something with you, in you, through you. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. Ophelia, is it Ophelia? Ophelia, I hear the Lord saying the best is yet to come, that this is a time and a season where behind you there was a lot of chaos, there was a lot of uh, disorder, there was a lot of things that were out of order, but I hear the Lord saying that this is a season where he's bringing things into order, he's bringing things into alignment, and now I hear the Lord saying that it's going to be a season of increase, and the Lord says there's going to be a deep healing that goes on in your life, a deep freeing that goes on in your life life and that he is going to bring order even where there has been chaos in the past. The Lord says order, that it shall be ordered rightly and it's beautiful. The Lord says it's beautiful and it's time. Hallelujah. So I release that over your life right now in Jesus name. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Say the Lord wants to do something in me, through me, and with me. Amen. Oh, he does. He does. He does. And you know, that was a a real prophetic word that Maureen brought through this morning. She said she kept hearing transformation, transformation, transformation. Anybody think that we are positioned for transformation? Do we need some transformation in Hamilton? I don't know about you, but most of us, we need some transformation in our own lives, and we need some transformation in our families. Oh, but God is the God of transformation, isn't he? He is. And you know, I want to announce this morning that the Lord spoke to me quite a number of months ago, and he said to me that we were going to be changing our name. Now, how many of you know that's biblical? There was a Saul... And then when he came to a certain season and junction in his life, the Lord said, no, I call you Paul. And it was a season and it was a shift. And it was a shift in Paul's apostolic ministry. And I believe that there is a shift, you know, in a, in a week or so, actually it's about 15 days, we're going to celebrate our 16th anniversary here. Did you know that? 16 years, now not in this building, but 16 years as the Revival Center. And what the Lord put upon my heart is he told me that this is a transformation center. That it is, and I wasn't planning on announcing that this morning, Maureen, but I'm going to go ahead and announce it because the Lord has already said transformation, amen? 
He said, this is a transformation center, and I'm going to use you as a hub of transformation in this community, and I'm going to use you as a hub even of transformation, even in the nation. And so I'm, I am going to, along with Dr. Russ and our leaders, we are going to have uh, in we're, we're still contemplating the time, but we're going to have a grand opening as the Transformation Center. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know what? It's not that we're not believing for a revival. We believe that God is going to sweep the earth in a new dimension of revival that he's never done. We're believing for the river to the ends of the earth, aren't we? And we know that God is, is popping up and moving around the nations and that there is also a stirring of a great end time revival that God is doing. Yes, we know that there are words about, well, there's a great falling away. But even as there is a great falling away, there is a great stirring up. And we are a part of that remnant church. We're not going to be a part of the great falling away. We're going to be a part of the great stirring up. Amen? And that God has caused us to be those that are revived so that we can be transformed, so that we can bring transformation. But God, because God transforms us to cause us to be transformers. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a transformer. Amen? And so we'll, we'll be having uh, a, a uh, grand opening, so to speak. You know, we, we didn't really quite get to have a grand opening here because we opened right in the midst of COVID. But how many of you know we brought transformation even to this building? And we're bringing transformation to the community. And I believe it's just a drop in the bucket to what God wants to do and how he wants to move through us. And so tonight... Today, I'm going to, I feel that the Lord is saying the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And that transformation is a part of our DNA. And I want to take you down a little walk of memory lane, and I want to connect you to the past so that we can step into our future. Are we ready to step into our future? I believe God is getting us ready. I believe that this equip weekend is pivotal. I want you to make it a point to be here Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday morning this coming weekend because it's going to be the first of our equip weekends. We're going to have one of these every month, and we're going to equip in different plays and, and uh, different ways, but this one is particularly going to be centered on freedom because how many of you know the devil has tried to shut us up, push us down, bind us up in so many ways, especially over the past year and a half, but the Lord says this is a time to come out. We're going to come out into a place of liberty. We're going to come out into a place of transformation, and there is something on Eagle Worldwide, the DNA that we have ministry of freedom and we we are going to have um, a time where we are going to receive freedom and where we're going to equip you to bring freedom so Wanda is going to be a part of that as well as myself and pastor Alex and it's going to be an awesome time so I want to really encourage you do whatever you can to be here Friday Saturday and Sunday because I believe it's pivotal this is what the Lord said to me that during this season we not we need to kind of be cleaned up so that we can go into that next dimension of what God wants to do. And there's some stuff he wants to clean off of us, and there's some stuff he wants to impart into us. And, you know, we're all about teaching, impartation, training, equipping, raising up. And so this is a part of that. And we're going to have these equip weekends every month. There's some more flyers back there at the back by the sound booth. If you have some people that you want to invite, grab some more flyers, invite them, or share it on Facebook as well. Um, it's on the Revival Center page. If you haven't liked our Revival Center page, make sure you go onto Facebook and you do that. Now, there's an old group that's called Revival Center. Don't, don't worry about that. Go to the page. And make sure you like our Revival Center page because constantly we're, we're putting things up there to let you know what's going on. And if you're not receiving our emails, I would like you to um, make sure that maybe you could send it around another clipboard where we get your email. Sometimes we, there's problems with people receiving emails. We're sending them, but you're not getting them. But we want to make sure that you get them because we send one out every week on Tuesdays, every week. <clears throat> So let me take you on a little journey. 
Do you want to know what our DNA is? There's something real powerful when we're connected with the stream that we're in, what God has done, where we are now, and where we're going. And I want to connect you with the DNA because we have a kingdom DNA. We have a kingdom DNA, and I want to recount the things of the past that God has done to connect us with our future. There's a clipboard right up here, too, if you need one. Uh, The kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. If you want to know what we're about, we're about the kingdom. We're about releasing the kingdom. We're about speaking the kingdom. We're about serving the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And what he has done in our life, we're about releasing that into the lives of others. And so I want to go, go through a little bit about who we are. Who are we? Who is Eagle Worldwide Ministries? And, you know, we were birthed in the midst of a great move of God by the power of God through the Spirit. We are an apostolic prophetic ministry. What does that mean? Well, apostolic means the sent one. And do you know that, that in the scripture there were all kinds of ones that were sent? You know, Moses was sent on a mission David was sent on a mission. Jesus was sent on the greatest mission ever, wasn't he? To transform, redeem, and deliver you and me. There, the, the process of God calling one and sending one is very biblical. And we were birthed out of that sent one. Dr. Russ called as a prophet who was just being raised up in his prophetic gifting. You know, he went to the Brownsville Revival, the Brownsville Revival School of Ministry. God took him where he had established five security-related businesses out of dreams and revelations, and he was a businessman for the Lord. He worked building the kingdom in the realm of business. As a marketplace minister, God called him into ministry to the Brownsville Revival, a radical touch from God. He enrolled in the, Br- the Brownsville Revival School of Ministry. And then God took him to the Calvary Campground in Virginia. And uh, that's about an hour from where I was raised. And it's a very, it's an interesting place where the prophetic moves and people come to be equipped and then they go back to the nations, people from the nations, people to the nations. And he was there for one year and God did an amazing thing. But you know, he met John and Victoria Irving in the restaurant and he prophesied over their lives in that Ponderosa restaurant. And do you know that that changed the course of history? That changed, you and I sitting here are linked to that prophetic word that was linked in in the Ponderosa. Isn't that incredible? Because that word of life that came forth, Pastor John said, well, you need to come to Canada. And so Dr. Russ said, you know, he, he prayed about it. And there were a couple things going on. And to make a long story short, he got some confirmation. He came to Canada and he uh, came into the church that Pastor John had invited him into. And this is way before the gathering place. The gathering place wasn't even birthed. This is what birthed the gathering place. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, he began to minister and all these young people came around him. And all these people started getting touched and changed and saved and transformed. And, And, you know, one weekend turned into weeks And, you know, Dr. Russ had come into the country. He had driven into the country with $300 and a suitcase. And to be honest with you, he wanted to go somewhere that was a lot warmer. You know what I'm saying? But he was being sent. And, you know, he had a vision of himself with red earmuffs. And he knew that God was saying, this nation, I've called you here. Red, it's our color for Canada, isn't it? red and white, and God was doing an amazing work. And so he began to continue to minister, and out of that ministry, there were so many young people who were touched and changed. And this is way back in, I want to say, 2000. And so then what happened is the gathering place was birthed, and Dr. Russ turned that church over to Pastor John. And in the midst of that, 
he had said to the Lord, he said, if you want me to stay here in Canada, and you know I'm going to start a ministry, you know, you want me to start this ministry, he said, I'm going to need $10,000. And then he said, well, no, I can do it for five. Because he knew there were things to do, establish, you know, corporation and all of these things. And he said, if that's really you, then you're going to provide. Now, I'm telling you this because this is your history. This is your DNA. This is where we're from. And so what happened is, is that in that service, somebody, uh, uh, one of the, the senior leaders uh, and in the group, she came up to him and she had a check and she pressed it into his hand and she said, the Lord said, give this to you. And it was a check. He opened it. He went to the bathroom, you know, went to the washroom, opened up the check. Guess what? $5,000. And he had just said to the Lord that day, it was a confirmation of originations. It was birthed in the power of the Spirit. And I want to tell you that Eagle Worldwide Ministries was birthed, Dr. Russ was sent here, and that we are fruit of that. There was a birthing and a building anointing that was on his life. He was sent here by God to birth and to build. And we birthed the gathering place. And then we birthed the nest. And then we birthed the revival center. And then we birthed other churches. And we birthed his glory house. And there were other churches even in there that were birthed that, that are no longer operating. But we birthed and we birthed according to the will and the plan of God. And there was an anointing to birth, and then people in our midst birth businesses. People in our midst, they would birth, maybe it was a nonprofit or an organization. There was a birthing and a building anointing. And this is the mission statement that God gave Dr. Russ. And he gave this mission statement all those many years ago. And there's only one word that's changed in it. And that's the word apostolic. He added that in all of these years, and it's been 20 years now. There's one word that has been added, and this is the mission statement that we still operate under today, and it's the mandate because it's a mission that came from God. It didn't come from man. And so that's why we operate under this mission statement. Let's read it together. Eagle Worldwide Ministries is an apostolic prophetic ministry called to bring revival fire to the nations and to challenge, empower, and equip the church of Jesus Christ with a powerful message of holiness and hope. We will focus on the restoration of foundational truths, preparing and equipping the saints for the end time harvest through teaching, impartation, and demonstrations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're a team ministry with a heart to see five-fold firefight teams raised up, working together in unity to bring the blessings of the Lord across denominational lines. Our team members come from diverse backgrounds and are willing to lay down their cultural and denominational differences to lift up the name of Jesus to restore unity to the body of Christ. In addition to the prophetic ministry, we will emphasize intercession, deliverance, and divine healing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We believe that this end time move of God's spirit will be one of holiness accompanied by signs and wonders and miracles and manifestations of the glory of our God. Realizing that time is short, we intend to use every means available to spread the saving and healing gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations of the world including a full range of multimedia, miracle crusades, teaching and practical ministry seminars, and meetings in small and large churches alike. It is our objective not to just to talk the talk, but to walk the walk. And at every level of this ministry, we will stress holiness, integrity, and dedication. We will expect to see the love and character of Christ in the lives of our staff and volunteers alike. 
Above all, we will pursue excellence in all that we do, and excellence is the best that you can be, period. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because that was the mission and the mandate 20 years ago, and you know we've been doing that for 20 years, and you know what? The best is yet to come. I wanna speak that over you this morning. The best is yet to come. Over our young people that are here, the best is yet to come. And when you see the, there's so much in that mission statement, we're gonna go through a little bit of, of it today, but you see that, that just as Dr. Russ was sent in this country and he was sent to birth and to build, guess what? We're still being sent. You and I are still being sent. And the, the ongoing mission and what God wants us to accomplish, we are still being sent. We are sent. And we are all about team ministry. It's not about one man. We are about team ministry. We're about fivefold, raising up fivefold ministers. Ephesians 4.11 says this, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You know, we're still being brought up into the measure of the fullness of Christ, each and every one of us, and us as a body. And we believe about team ministry. You know, we have prayer teams. We raise up teams. We have outreach teams. We have prophetic teams. We have healing teams. And we are in the midst of even rebuilding those because there's been a great transition and it, there's been a season of transition. But what I want to say to you this morning is that we believe in the fivefold. We don't believe just in the, the ministry of a pastor because when we have the, just the ministry of the pastor, then we have the fruit of just the pastoral. But with the apostolic, we believe in the fivefold. We need the teachers. We need the prophet. We need the apostle. We need the birthing and building anointing. We need those anointings to be stirred up. And we're stirring them up this morning. I hope you know that. And we're getting back on track because to know what God has called us to and what he's called us to be. Say team ministry. He's called us to be in teams and work as teams and equip teams and raise up teams and empower teams. You see, it's not all about one person, one couple, one man, one woman. No, it's about the body of Christ. And we believe in the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Now, oftentimes you hear about ministry and you think, well, it's just that couple in the front. Say, no, that's me. That's me. Every one of us, if you're a saint, if you are part of the body of Christ, then you are called to ministry because it's the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. And that's a part of our equip weekends that we're gonna be having every month. We wanna equip you, that you would be equipped to be not only just be healed, be delivered, and be raised up, but we want you to be able to do that with others. And so we're, we believe in equipping and training. We're about team ministry, fivefold, raising up leaders. We believe in raising up leaders, mentoring leaders, discipling leaders. And what, what are we called to? Mark 3, 14, 15, and it says, and then he appointed the 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. You know what? We are all called to go out and to share the gospel, preach the gospel. We're all called to do that. And God is mobilizing us as an army. How are we gonna bring transformation? It's not about one person. It's about us as a collective entity, called and equipped to bring transformation. We equip the saints for the work of ministry, and how have we done that? We've had schools of the spirit. We've had mentoring. We've had discipleship. We've had a school of the prophets. We train leaders. 
We have Eagle Worldwide Training Center online, and if you haven't checked that out, I would encourage you to check it out because there's so many wonderful courses there. We had it in person, physically, on site where we trained up, and many people who are part of our leadership teams have been graduates of Spirit Ministries Training Center, which now we've changed the name to Eagle Worldwide Training Center. If you go to our website, then you can find that there and go to the training section. But not just online, personally, we are committed to train, disciple, and equip you. In what? In the gifts of the Spirit. Why? Because we need the gifts of the Spirit. If we didn't need the gifts of the Spirit, why would the Holy Ghost have sent those? We need the gifts of the Spirit so that we can do the work of ministry. We know that we're all called to the work of ministry, but what is it? Well, we need those gifts to be activated. Healing, deliverance, prophecy. It says in 1 Corinthians 14, 39, it says, Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy. See, this is part of our DNA. We are prophetic people. We are ones who hear the Lord. We are ones who decree. We are ones who speak the word. And then we're the ones who go out and we enact the word. So we need to earnestly desire to prophesy, to desire spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 14.1, it says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. And Timothy 4, 14 and 15, it says, don't neglect the gift that is in you. And I want to exert, exhort you and say that to you this morning. Don't neglect the gift that is in you. What kind of gift is in you? Don't neglect it, but stir it up. Stir up the gift that was, that was imparted to you when hands were laid upon you. And here's some of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the working of miracles, the discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, the interpretation of tongues. We need to be trained and equipped in the gifts of the Spirit so that we can move in power and anointing. And we're committed to doing that. We believe that these are gifts for the end time church that we can be trained up in and mobilized in. What about prayer and intercession? We, this is part of our DNA, and as I'm going over these things, this is our DNA, this is who we are. We are these things. This, these, this is the kingdom DNA that we have inside of us. Prayer and intercession. We believe in prayer and intercession. We believe that the higher the level of prayer, the higher a level of breakthrough that we will see. And we are right in the, in the process of forming even new uh, avenues of prayer. We have online prayer, but we're going to be turning up the heat a lot in the area of prayer. Why? Because we need a breakthrough. If we're going to bring transformation, we can't do with that in our own power. We can't do that in our own might. We have to be moving and operating by the gifts of the Spirit and through the power of the Spirit. And it says day and night, prayers going up. There's a new level of intercession that is coming, and I'm declaring that it's a new level that would bring transformation. But first, our prayer has to be transformed. First, our prayer life has to be transformed. And you know what? God has given us people who have that gift of intercession, and we're going to have training sessions. We're going to have opportunities that you can get involved in prayer in a new level. And you know, I want to encourage you, when you come into this building, don't just be like a bump in a log. But when you come in, begin to intercede. Begin to be active in your spirit. Begin to pray in tongues. Maybe you come in early. Maybe you walk through the tabernacle. Maybe you speak, you anoint the chairs. Maybe you pray in tongues. You see, we need to be active, not just in the natural, not just in doing acts, but we need to be active in our spirit and spur one another up to good works. You know, one of the most wonderful things you can do is pray in your neighborhood. As you walk through your neighborhood, guess what happens? You get to get a heart for the people and for the families and for the kids and for the playground. Pray. 
When you're in your building and you go up in the elevator, pray. Pray in your spirit because God wants to download a heart, a heart for those all around about us. You see, we need to be active in our spirits and we need to repent of the place where we have grown just complacent. But God wants to reactivate us even where we know and believe that prayer is exciting. Prayer is a place of encounter. Prayer is a place where I hear God. Prayer is a place where the secrets of the Lord are revealed. Prayer is a place where he's releasing even the strategies of heaven. And you know, God is going to be doing a new work in us in that place, in that place of transforming prayer. Prayer and intercession. What about tabernacle worship? God is restoring that place of tabernacle worship. You know, it's, we, we've been in a season even where, where the enemy has tried to shut that down. But this is a, I want to encourage you, press into worship. We're going to be pressing into corporate worship. We're going to be raising up new teams. God is going to be sending new people. God is going to be sending new leaders. And I'm believing for a, a, an increase in worship, tabernacle worship, you know, where we dance, where we flag, where we are released into a new measure of freedom. Because worship is the place where heaven meets earth. Worship is the place where our spirits ascend and heaven meets earth. How many of you know we need divine encounter? We need divine encounter. We need divine encounter. What about marketplace ministry and kingdom wealth builders? We believe in that. We believe that you can be a ministry not just behind a pulpit, but that every one of us has a pulpit. Maybe you're a teacher. Or maybe you're a businessman. Or wherever you are, God has mobilized ministers in the marketplace. That's you. Say, that's me. That's you. God is mobilizing ministers in the marketplace. And it's not just behind a pulpit. He's given every single one of us a pulpit. We train people so that people would know that they are an ambassador of the kingdom of God wherever they are. If you're in business, you're an ambassador of the kingdom of God. If you're in the schools, you're an ambassador of the kingdom of God. If you're in the hospital, guess what? You're an ambassador of the kingdom of God. You know, when I worked in the hospital, I worked in hospitals for 10 years before I went into full-time ministry. And I remember when I worked in the rehab hospital, uh, people would come and they would ask me questions about what I was doing after work. And, and you know, pretty soon they, they saw that my life was a life that was given to Christ. I worked in inner city missions. I worked with, with kids and I would go in and do Bible studies. Uh, and, and when I went and did these Bible studies with little kids, you know, there were bullet, I would hear bullet shots going off. And, you know, they would come and ask me questions about what I did and why I did it. And they called me Mother Teresa, which at the time I was like, please don't even say that. I couldn't even be compared with Mother Teresa. But what I'm trying to tell you is that people see and they know and they notice. They notice the kingdom call upon your life. You're an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the highest call no matter where you are. And we're called to transform the seven spheres of influence, the seven spheres of our culture, media, government, education, economy, family, religion, and arts and entertainment. We are called as the body of Christ, not just to be a local church. Are we gonna be a local church? Yes, we are. But we're going to be a local church that is so empowered with the kingdom dynamic that as we go out and we penetrate that sphere of influence that we're called to, that we will bring the kingdom of God to bear. Because it's not about just coming into a building once a week. If we think that it's about coming into a building once or twice a week, we have missed the boat. And this is what we are being transformed to. It's about going out of the building and into the sphere of influence where God has called you to, no matter what that is, and taking the kingdom of God because you are an ambassador 
of the kingdom of God. Do you come in the building? Yes, you do, but then guess what? You bring somebody else with you because God is using you as a transforming agent that they might come in. Into what? Into relationship with him. And that then he would cause them to be discipled. He would cause them to be raised up. But you know what you are? You're an agent of transformation. Say that, I am an agent of transformation. I'm called to go out and to bring the transforming message with power, with anointing to my sphere of influence. Hallelujah. This is our DNA. You know, Dr. Russ, he has a very, very good understanding of marketplace ministry because he did marketplace ministry for 20 years. As I told you, five security-related businesses. And he also had a television show where he would interview different people and it was penetrating that, that sphere of influence. And so when he got into pulpit ministry, he had a real heart that, you know what? It's not just me that's in ministry, it's, it's all of our marketplace ministers. And you know, as a, as a apostolic network, Eagle Worldwide network of ministries, we cr- credential and ordain ministers. We have a network of ministers. So we see the gifting and calling upon their life, and then what do we do? We come in agreement with it and we commission them. We commission them in pulpit ministry and we commission them in marketplace ministry. And we believe that there is power when you are connected in apostolic alignment. When God says, you know what? This is the company I'm called to. This is the DNA I'm called to. These are, this is the tribe or people that God has put me with. And as I come in alignment with a vision, as I come in alignment with a history, it, as I come in alignment with where God has put me, it gives me power and authority, not only in a region, but in every area of influence that God has called me to. If it's if whatever sphere that is. Because God is equipping Christians not to be just these little meager, or, you know, weaklings. No, we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us and we have a message and we have a mandate and we have a mission. We have a mission. And that mission is to, as I said in the beginning, that the kingdoms of this world would become the kingdoms of our God and King. And who is the representative of him in the earth today? That's you and me. Not in our own strength, but again, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know, as we are raising up, we're not just raising up those who are in marketplace. We believe in every generation and every nation. And I want to commend Wanda. She's been doing an excellent job with the youth. Let's just give her a hand. Yep. We had an awesome uh, youth day last weekend. I believe it was last weekend. Uh, the weekends are blurring together. It was, okay. Uh, but you know what? And then the other... there. We're 17 youth there, I believe. Isn't that awesome? That's wonderful. You know what the Lord said to me quite a number of months ago? He said, you're going to be known for your youth ministry, which I thought was really funny because we, we, I don't know how many we had, maybe five. But we've already, we've already seen a tripling of that. Isn't that amazing? Because it's every generation and it's every nation. And that's what we should look like in here. We believe in that, and we believe there's no junior Holy Spirit. We believe that the Holy Spirit can move through, you know, a youth. We believe that the Holy Spirit can move through the kids, and we want the kids raised up and trained up in Holy Ghost ministry. We want the youth trained up in Holy Ghost ministry. Why? Because they're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We believe in that, and we believe in every tribe and tongue, every tribe and tongue, You know, it's amazing. Uh, God sent Dr. Russ here, and he has ministered in Portuguese churches and Spanish churches and African churches and, you know, whatever. We've been into the Arctic. We have ministered into the Arctic. I want to say probably maybe 17 or 18 trips into the Canadian Arctic. And myself, I've been on two two trips to the Canadian Arctic. Since I've been with the ministry, I've been to France with Dr. Russ and Pastor Maeve. I've been to Trinidad several times. I mean, you know what? It's the nations. 
the nations. God has called us to the nations, every tribe and every tongue. And you know, when I look around here and I see all of us from different nations, I, I, the joy of the Lord, I can't explain. Because you know why? That's the heart of God. Every tribe and every tongue and every generation. Every generation. God is going to do something with the young people. <clears throat> this is their time and their season. You know, we need this generation to experience God like God wants to experience, have him be experienced in this generation. You know, we had the, the move of the Jesus movement in the 70s. Guess what? We can't live on that for today's generation. They have to experience God for themselves. They have to come into a real experience of him. Every generation and every nation. And we are called to community transformation. Why? Because he transformed us. And you know, we believe, we believe in personal transformation. We believe in family transformation. But we believe in community transformation. We believe that God can use us to establish the kingdom of God in a region where believers are equipped to facilitate the kingdoms of earth becoming the kingdoms of our Lord and King. Matthew 10, 8 says this, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received. And what are you supposed to do? What? What? Freely give. And God is raising us up that we are not going to be those that are going to be pew sitters, but we are going to be men and women and young people of God that are going to go out. And what are we going to do? We're going to freely give. I want you to say that again. What? Freely give. I'm telling you, this is a new time and a new season. God is stirring us up. And I hope that he's stirring you up because there is something that God wants to do. There's something that he wants to do personally. There's something that he wants to do in your neighborhood. There's something that he wants to do in this community. You know, God has given me a heart for Hamilton, but I believe that it goes beyond that. And, and the nations are here. The nations are in Ontario. The nations are in Canada. When we say, God, give us the nations, guess what? They're here. You know, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why did you send me here? because I had no idea he was gonna send me to Canada. Oh, but he said it's the leaves of the trees that are for the healing of the nation. The healing of the nations. Do you believe that this morning? I want you to turn, or you can look on the screen at Genesis 28. I wanna read this portion of scripture because I believe it's very prophetic for where we are right now. And I want you to meditate it on it when you're in your own time with God. It says, now Jacob went out from Beersheba and he went toward Haran. And so he came to a certain place and he stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and he put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. I want to ask you, do you find yourself in a hard place lately? Can you imagine going, down to, going to sleep with a stone under your head? That doesn't even sound good, does it? That sounds just horrendous but it was a place of visitation. I wanna ask you, have you been going through a hard place? Anybody? Have you been going through a hard place? I think we have as a nation, as a community, as a people, as families, we've found ourselves in a hard place. But I'm declaring over you this morning that the hard place is gonna be a place of visitation, that the hard place is gonna be a place of encounter, that the hard place is gonna be a place where you experience God in a new measure. You just need to open up your heart. You need to open up your heart. And it says, and then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and in its top, reached to heaven, and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. You know, we are a ministry that was birthed in dreams and visions. We're a ministry where each and every one of our churches that were birthed through dreams and through visions. We believe that we can hear God as an entity. We believe that God wants to speak to us. I want to tell you today, God wants to speak to you. 
God wants to encounter you even in the hard place. Have you been hearing God? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But I want to tell you there's a greater measure that God has for us that you would hear him. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic level. I want to tell you God wants to speak to you. And what happened in that place where God spoke? Oh, he saw a ladder and the ladder came down. And he saw that there were angels that were descending and ascending. I want to tell you that there are heavenly assignments that the Lord has for us as a corporate entity. There are heavenly assignments that he wants to release, that he wants us to grab a hold of, that he wants us to understand, that he wants us to get in cooperation with, that he wants us to step out of the place of being in the flesh and being in the spirit and step out of a place of being complacent, step out of a place of being in the doldrums, step out of the place of just doing the same old thing every day, but coming in cooperation fully with Holy Spirit that whatever Holy Spirit is, is sending down, that we would cooperate with it and that we would move in that realm where you know what's happening? Heaven is coming to earth because you are an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. How does heaven come to earth? Yes, he sends the angelic realm. Yes, he sends visitation. Yes, he sends revelation. Yes, we can hear the word of the Lord. But I want to say that the heavenly realm comes through you. You have the mission and the mandate. When Jesus was caught up and he, he went, who did he commission? He commissioned his disciples. Who is that now? Say, that's me. We need to come to that place where we're not living for ourselves. No, but we're living in the place where, you know what? My purpose is to accomplish the kingdom mission and mandate that God has for me. And that my life is a place where the angels are descending and the angels are ascending. It's a place of heavenly encounter. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and God of Isaac, and the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants, and your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall shed abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed." Now, there was a generational anointing that was on Abraham. And who did the generational blessing go to? Abraham and then Isaac. And then who's having the dream here? Jacob. I want to ask you, are you dreaming the dreams of God? You know, Dr. Russ, 20 years ago, he dreamt the dreams of God. God sent him here. And even when he didn't want to come to a cold place, he came. You know why? Because it was a place of visitation, that the angels came, that the angels went up. But he is our father generationally. Generationally, he was that generation that brought the power and presence of God in such a dimension that there was birthing. And I want to say it's time now that we take the torch it's time now that we be the ones that we embrace the generational blessing that is on our life. This is our DNA. This is your DNA. Shannon and Stefan were saved out of the Kingsway. They were saved 10 years ago. Wow, they, I've seen a big transformation in their lives in 10 years. They're part of the generational heritage of what God has done. And if you're in this room, so are you. And what God is saying today is, are you going to pick up the generational mission and mandate? Because it's your DNA. You know, it, there had to be a decision here that, Jace, that Jason, what am I saying? That, that Jacob took upon himself. He had to say yes for himself. You see, we have to say yes for ourselves. Yes. I want to fully embrace all that God has the generational blessing that is upon my life. Because the Lord is saying, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. I believe that. God sent us into Hamilton. We have a mission. We have a mandate with this Ontario, with this region. There is a covenant that we have here.
And God is saying, do you recognize that I have given you not just a covenant, but a mission, but a mandate in this, in this region, in this realm, spiritually? That is our inheritance. And God wants us to embrace it fully, to know what will he do? And your descendants shall be the dust of the earth, and you shall but shed abroad to the west and the east. You see, there are so many that God has a heart for. There are so many that he's called us to impact. And you know what? This morning, if you are feeling you are out of alignment, you are out of alignment, God is saying, come in. Come into alignment. Because this is what I want to do. This is what I want to demonstrate. This is what I want to, to reveal and manifest. And how am I going to do it? I want to do it through you. Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, and I will not leave you. And this is what Jacob said. He said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. You see, God allowed his eyes to be opened. And in that dream, he saw the ladder coming down. I want to say to you, this is the house of God, and it's the gate of heaven. The gate of heaven that we might see God do amazing things in our midst, but not just in this room. Through me and you, that we would facilitate the gate of heaven in this region, in this neighborhood, in your neighborhood. You see, that's what we're called to. God wants to use us as the gate of heaven. And I believe corporately, God wants us to know that this is the house of God, but it's the gate of heaven. I want to stir you up this morning. I want to stir you up to believe. Matt, could you come up? I want to stir you up to believe. I want to stir you up. We're going to just, in a, a time of, of prayer here, we're going to respond to this word. And I want to say to you, this is the gate of heaven. But we need to make ourselves available, even as Jacob did in that hard place. And we need to recognize what God did in the past was an awesome thing. It was an awesome thing. Wouldn't you agree what God has done has been an awesome thing? But what God wants to do, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come, and it's through me and you. And you know what? In the, in the weeks ahead, I'm going to, we're going to have some more unfolding vision that we're going to talk about, but I wanted to lay the foundation because I feel like if you don't understand the foundation, how can you build? But God wants us to know that this is a place of visitation. Why don't you stand up right where you are this morning? Hallelujah. Would you just pray with me in the spirit for a moment? Oli arabasi kiriri arabasondoro rokoshen de 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 arabasa. E de 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 arabasondoro kore de 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 arabaka. Oh, I just want you to open yourself up right now. I just want you to pray in the spirit. Open yourself up and know that there is a portal of the Holy Spirit that is even above you right now. Oh, kore de de aramande de de arabaka li arasi de 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 arabasondoro ko. Maybe you found yourself in a hard place, but I hear the Lord saying that this is time to step up and step out. That even in the hard place that God is bringing this as a place of visitation. And I hear the Lord saying, don't be content with where you have been, but I'm calling you to step into the new, says the Lord. I'm stepping you to step into that place of transformation, even yourself. And I hear the Lord saying, are you, are you, are you, are you ready for the new? And are you sick and tired of what has been? And are you ready to press in to what is ahead? Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just lift up your hands to the Lord this morning. Maybe God is putting something specific on your heart and you feel like it's been running interference. I, I just kept hearing that word, interference. If there's been something in your heart and your life that's been running interference, maybe it's a mindset, maybe it's tormenting thoughts, maybe it's some spiritual oppression, maybe it's something that you've been running to, maybe it's a distraction, maybe there's been other things that have been put before the kingdom, but I hear the Lord saying there's, there's been interference but it's time to clear the way and to step into the new. Whatever that is, just lift it up to the Lord right now. If you need forgiveness, just ask him, Father, forgive me, wash us. Lord, whatever has been in our lives, God, where there's been something that is as running interference, Lord, we, we repent this morning. We repent that times of refreshing would come. Lord, we repent, Father, where there's been prayerlessness. Father, we repent where there's been passionlessness. Lord, we repent where we've been distracted going towards other things. Lord, we repent this morning. And Lord, we say, I want to give my all to you. I want to give my all to you. Just with every eye closed this morning, if that's you and you hear the Lord speaking to you and you're ready to open up your heart afresh and anew for the new thing, for the new vision, for new transformation, for a new time, for a new season, and you know that God is calling you to a new place of consecration, if that's you, I just want you to lift your hand up this morning. Lift your hand up. I want to pray for you. Father, I just thank you for the hands that are raised all over this room. Lord, you see our hands, you see our hearts. Lord, we want to step into the new with you. Thank you, Jesus. Just say this prayer with me. Father, I give my life afresh and anew to you to be an agent of change, an agent of transformation, full of the power of the Holy Ghost. And Father, right now, I turn away from the things of the flesh, the things of the world, from sin, from every snare. And Lord, I'm stepping into a place of the new with you to be an agent of your power of your anointing of your spirit an agent of transformation thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is going to do something good. Let's just give him a shout. Let's just give him some praise this morning. Let's just give him a great big hand. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the new. We thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we thank you that you are bringing us in even to a place of freedom, a place of transformation, a place of empowerment, a place of breakthrough, a place of anointing. Oh, God, Father, I pray over your people that there would be a new dimension that they would hear you there would be a new dimension where they would speak what you put in their hearts to speak that there would be a new dimension of anointing god that there would be a new dimension of the mission and the mandate that you have put upon their lives and father that they would step into the new so father i thank you god lord let this be the gate of heaven where you manifest yourself Lord, let this be the gate of heaven. Lord, where you come down in power and in authority. Lord, let this be a gate of heaven. And I want you to say that over yourself. Lord, let me be a gate of heaven. Lord, let me be a gate of heaven. 
Lord, let me be a gate of heaven wherever you've called me. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just give the Lord a shout today, amen. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift up your your hearts and, and toward the Lord. Now, if you're really looking for God's best, if you're really desiring God's best, if you want the blessing of the Lord, if you want to even be used, if you want to stand before him where he says, well done, good and faithful servant, open up your heart to the Lord. Let's look to him right now. Father, we're declaring, O God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we're declaring, Father, that we, Father God, are called for such a time as this. Father, we're declaring, Father God, that out of this people here today are coming forward even those that have mantles for the end time. Father, we're believing that those that are here in the hour, Father, are those that are sent. Father, we're declaring, Father, there are those that are coming forward as evangelists. There are those that are coming forward as prophets. There are those that are coming forward as pastors, teachers, gifts of help, gifts of mercy. Father, we're declaring, Father God, that Lord, even in the hour ahead, that this is the ones that you've called for this region. Father, we're prophesying now that we are, Father, Lord, the ones, Father God, that you've given the land. Everywhere that we stand, the land is even that, Father God, that you've given us. So, Father, we're declaring that this is an area of transformation. We're declaring that we are gates even in the kingdom of our God. We're declaring the power of the Holy Ghost resides, Father God, even within our hearts. And, Father, I pray, dear God, that there would be a release of the prophetic upon this people even now. Father, I'm asking that there would be an impartation of the prophetic anointing of the Spirit. Father, let the ministry of intercession be released upon this people now. Father, let the power gifts of the Spirit be released upon this people now. Father, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, Father God, let there be, Father, a mighty anointing of the Holy Ghost descending now even in the hour we're declaring great transformation, great transformation, great transformation coming upon this people. And Father, we're asking, oh God, in Jesus' name, that there would be a release of intimacy. Father, between the Holy Spirit and this one that's reaching out today, let there be an intimacy in the dream realm. Father, getting the dreams of the Lord. Let there be an intimacy, Father God, in the hearing realm. Father, hearing you in prayer. Father, let there be an intimacy in the intercessory realm. Father, knowing you in a deep way. So, Father, we're believing you, O God, that the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and it adds no sorrow with it would be upon this people. Father, we're declaring that our best days are yet to come. We're declaring, Father, transformation personally, corporately, and in the area, Father, is even that that we're walking in. We're believing you for it. We receive from you now in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we want to thank you if you've been watching online. God bless you. We love you. And may you go forward knowing that you are a transformer. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us.